us. This session will focus on a great customer journey across all channels engaging customers with personal, relevant, seamless and differentiating experience. And to do justice to the job at hand, may I now invite Mr. Samik Roy, Country Head, Microsoft Business App, here on stage, please. A round of applause for Samik as he takes us through this. Am I audible? Samik, the stage is on. Uh, and am, I, am I audible at the back? Good morning. I'm usually the last speaker, so when I say good afternoon, nobody responds. So this time I thought I will swap and become the first speaker. Good morning. You know, when a speaker from Economic Times talks today and she talks about C, I really thought she meant currency. Okay. Um, day before yesterday night, I looked at all the registrations which were there today confirmed. And though we are talking of retail, I understand that there are various sub-verticals of retail which are present here. There are people here from brick and mortar companies, there are people here who basically are there in brick, brick and store companies, there are people here from the online business, there are people here from the e-commerce business, there are people here from Domino's, there are people also here from the airlines business. So I modified the presentation to be all inclusive and have something for everyone. So if someone during the presentation feels this is not applicable to me, just stay on there because you will feel something which will be applicable to you. When we talk of the digital world in retail, we talk of four aspects, and I will talk of those four aspects in, great, in, in greater detail as we go through. The first aspect is about engaging the customer. So this is everything to do with the external world. For us, the customer is not only the consumer, it's, it's also your suppliers, your dealers, your distributors. So it's everything which is outside the organization and how you engage with them. So that's the first pillar. The second pillar is about the internal organization. It's about your employees. It's about empowering those employees to engage more effectively with the external world to increase brand recall, mind share, wallet share, market share, or whatever you call it. The third pillar is about operational efficiencies, where you look at every business aspect of your organization and make it better in order to help the second pillar service the first pillar better. And the last of it is analysis, where we use all of this intelligence, whether it's the external world or the internal world, to understand the consumers, the marketplace, the competition, the economy is better, in order to make your product, your offering, your promotion, your services better for the external world. I thought I will start with the end in mind. What I'm starting with is an example of how digital has gone through the digital transformation journey. This is an organization called Amway. Have you all heard of Amway? It's into health products, beauty care products, etc. So we, what I'm showing you is, is models of the store that we created. But this store exists today. If any of you are going to Bangalore, this is on, um, which street is it? Brigade Road and you must go and visit this. So I will show you different sections of this store. And while you're going through it, just keep in mind the digitization thoughts which have gone behind it. The entire store was designed with a customer experience perspective. Okay? What does the customer go through, or what are the things the customer likes, or the way they want to interact with, or the way they want to think when they go inside the store? This picture out here is the main hall. That's when you enter the store. On the left-hand side are the TV commercials which are on. It talks about Amway. It talks about their mission. It talks about their vision. It talks about what's the purpose of the organization and some TV commercials out there. It's trying to create the brand. Once you cross this zone, there is something which is called a technical zone. Right? This is the zone where people will go to if they're trying to buy products which has a lot of depth in them. Let's look at it as a tablet, or they are trying to buy a supplement. So there are digital platforms where they can go and find out stuff about it. And if you notice, everywhere the customer goes, a relevant commercial is behind it. And that is not a TV commercial. That commercial out there is talking about what's the supplement made out of? What are the ingredients of the supplement? 
what is the supplement helping? How will the supplement be beneficial? So, it is the technology zone if a person wants to dig deep into what is the product he or she is going to buy. The next zone is the zone which is the shopping zone. So, here you can pick up any product that you want to buy. This might be a beauty care product, it might be a supplement, it might be a tablet, it is any of the products that Amway sell. It is not necessarily linked to the technical zone, but it is just the shopping zone. And as you know, people today want to be very aware of what they are buying, where they are spending the money and be informative about what they are buying. So, you can pick up this particular product and go to this particular zone, which is what we call as the information zone. You put the product out there, there is a scanner out there which scans the product and based on what the product you have put on the automated shelf, it will tell you everything about the product. So, you can scroll the about the product, you can understand more and when you are ready to buy, you just say add it to the cart and you can buy the product. If you notice all of this is happening digitally and this as I said is a store which actually exists today and all the Amway stores, the big stores of Amway will, will traverse through this journey. Once they have bought the product, they come into something which is called a gaming zone. So, here there is a game which is like a Templeton game where you are the person who is running and while you are running there are different kinds of foods and supplements which are thrown at you and there are different kind of ghosts and different kind of animals which come on the way. The entire concept of this is you are supposed to grab the food which is good for your health and you are supposed to ignore the food which is bad for your health. If you have the food which is good for your health, you are able to combat the animals and the ghosts which come on the way and score, right. If you take the food which is a fatty food and which is not good for your health, you will lose. So, you go through this entire gaming zone. So, you basically what you say, you are getting a more immersive experience as you are going through the store. And at the end of it, you come to this TV which has, if you notice a kinet on top of it, which can actually understand your gestures, your face, yourself. And then this is the place where you can basically do an ale display, you can try and apply different kind of beauty products of Amway and see how you actually look without using them. So, that is what the entire store is about. I thought I will start with this is, because generally we go through theory without trying to understand what we are reaching out to. But if you notice, everything around this was about digitization. Let us come back to the four circles we started with. We, we started with four pillars. We talked of empowering the customer, we talked of empowering the, in, the individuals of an organization, operational efficiencies and the product. So, we will cover each one of them one by one. When we talk about the C, the customer, okay, we are talking about as I said everybody in the external world. It is your partners out there, it is your dealers out there, it is your distributors out there, it is your suppliers out there. But of course, we focus on the consumer, which is the most important person in the entire ecosystem. When we talk of the consumer today in the realm of uh, retail, we clearly see two divides and I will talk about this in detail as we go through. One which is on this side is the physical store. This is the in-store experience, where you generally people will go to a store. When you go to a store, you basically look at branding, you look at ales, you look at footfalls and you go through something what we call as a treasure hunt, which cloth, which cloth is looking, which clothes are looking good on me, which particular products is looking good on me. You basically go into a fitting room, you try it out, you like something, you have a conversation with the guy, you go into a till or a pause or your billing counter, you basically buy it and you walk out, correct? On your right hand side, is the digital store. This is a store where you do not buy from 11 o'clock to 8 o'clock or whatever is the timing the shop is open. This is a store which is 24 by 7, not 7 11, 24 by 7, correct? You go out there and whatever product you want to shop, you get any kind of information that you want. Generally, when a person wants to buy something, he has an Amazon open. He has a flip card open, he has a snap deal open, he has a jabong open, he looks at whichever gives you the best deal, who, what are the customers and the consumers saying about it and he shops. He does not go into an aisle, he does not go into a till, he does not go into a pause, he does not go into a billing counter, he just adds stuff to the cart and then he swipes the credit card and he walks out, correct? They are two different worlds, but think of this, think of 
the customer today. Okay? The problem today is there are two things which have really disrupted this entire system or, or, or the industry. The first is the internet and the second is mobility. Right? Why mobility? Because that's there in your fingertips. As we speak, there are always people who will be doing emails, who can do SMSs, who can do communication. Why? Because it's there on your fingertips. That's the power of mobility. And the internet brings all that information onto your mobile. Right? The biggest problem today is understanding who is your influencing factor. A couple of years ago, you knew, knew that your consumer or the customer is the guy who is going to pay who is going to swipe the credit card, who is going to sign the check, the actual buyer. A couple of years later, it was the household, your spouse, your children, your parents, your household, your family could influence which hotel you will go into, where you will go into a holiday. Today, it is not. If you want to buy a camera with a zoom lens to do tiger photography for your journey to Gir Forest, a person sitting in Brazil who did a similar kind of photography or who, or who went into an expedition in Africa could actually influence your decision, correct? And that's why it's very difficult to understand where does the influencing factor come from and that's the biggest disruption. Now also look at how does the consumer or the end customer buy today. The end customer goes into all these things which I talked about, whether it's a Jabong or it's a Flipkart or it's an Amazon or it's a snap deal, it looks at which, which particular person is giving a deal, looks at what are people talking about them in the social media, media, what are the customers speaking about them, and then takes a decision on what product to buy. The same customer can then walk into a store where that particular product is available, whether it's a Nike shoe, whether it's a cycle, whether it's a particular dress, and have an interaction with that guy in the store. The, if a person has clarifications, the person wants to discuss that with the store guy. Then he goes into the billing counter, he swipes his card, he moves out. Let's say the person has bought a particular technical product and he has a problem. He can give a call to the call center and expects the call center to understand who the customer is, giving meaningful information, solve the problem, goes back into the house, uses the product, goes into social media, writes stuff about it, and the journey continues. If you'll notice, throughout this journey, there are different channels which come in. There was the online, there was the store, there was the call center, there was loyalty somewhere. But in the midst of all of it is the same customer. And this is important. Many people feel that the world is divided. There is either an in-store or there is online. There is either brick and mortar or there is click and mortar. We believe that there will be an amalgamation of it. It's not that everybody will have an in-store or everybody will be on the online. There may be people who will continue to be separate, but the majority of this will have the whole thing as an organization. And there are many organizations today. We started with digital e-commerce and we are going into the in-store experience. There are many people who have always been in-store, like the Walmarts, who have now started coming into the online experience. So there has to be a unification and amalgamation of the two. Now, come back to what we were talking about, the customer. For a customer, when he goes into the online store or e-commerce, he has all of these privileges, features, functionalities to look at all kinds of products, do comparisons, and find out technical details. When the same customer walks inside a store, you actually have a sales representative talking to that customer. Okay. Put yourself in the customer or the consumer shoes. You would basically expect that that experience is richer than the online experience. Right? In any business, the most valuable time is the time when a prospect or the customer is in front of you. In a banking, it's when the person is in front of a teller or in front of a private banking uh, uh, manager. In an airline industry, it's when the guy is in front of the different places where the airline interacts with them. That's the most valuable person, right? Think about it. In the store, is the person and your systems designed to give a better experience than what this person gets when he or she is online? Okay. That's what we call as the modern store, which is an amalgamation of the in-store and the online thing. 
which is called the modern digital store. Which takes me to the next point, which is about optimizing operations. So what does this modern store do, right? The modern store basically enables in assisted selling. So if that same customer walks into a shop where the customer could browse so many things online and my shop has a limitation in terms of ale, I can only keep that many number of clothes, I can only keep that many number of varieties of shoes, I can only keep that many amount of products. But I can have a tablet where I can browse the, with the guy the kind of product which the person wants. I can, I can analyze who this customer is. If it's a loyalty customer, what are the products that he has purchased? Okay? What are the people talking about those products? And if a person has purchased X, what is the Y product which you can cross sell or upsell to him? It's simple. It's market basket analysis, right? which we all we do in retail. Why is onion always kept next to potato? Because people understand that when you buy a potato, you buy onions generally. Right? Why are eggs kept next to something? Why are diapers kept n next to Johnson & Johnson lotions? Right? Because when a person picks this up, when a person picks that up. But I can understand all of that if I have these tablets or these phones to be able to provide me that kind of information. That's what we call as assisted selling. And when the person decides to buy, you use that tab or you use the mobile phone to do a, to do a service. You basically swipe the card, the entire invoice can go in the form of an email, the loyalty is automatically updated, the person at the call center, in case this customer gives the call to the call center, knows everything about it. There is no passing of paper, there is no information flowing from services X to services Y to systems Z to systems A, B, C. It's all one particular system. Right? The same person now does not need to go to a billing counter or a POS or a TIL. Just like he said, add to cart or the example of Amway where I said the person goes out there, puts it out there, the thing gets scanned, you said add to cart. The same way this person can assist that guy. So basically if you go through this entire journey, you can give the same or a better experience to the consumer than what he gets in the online store. This is a recent photograph. I just came back from Australia from a two-week two, uh, two, two holiday. And this is a photograph I took at McDonald's. And this McDonald's has this entire digital board where you can buy any of those products which are available off the shelf. But you can also make your own burgers. And it, it gives you the option out there. And if you notice, there's a small machine out there, you put in your card, you basically punch in your pin, you get the bill, you go and give the bill, and that order is ready. Right? So whatever we are talking of today is a reality. What I started with was an example of Amway, where we have done it in India. What I'm showing you is an example of McDonald's, which is done overseas. And I, what, what I will end, end with is an example where we have again done it for Delta Airlines, which is in the airlines industry. Let's move to the next aspect, which is empowering your employees, which was the next pillar, correct? One of the aspects in the retail industry is churn and people moving on again and again. Okay? And as I said, the most valuable time in any organization is when you're in front of a customer or a prospect or a prospective buyer, whatever term you, you call it out. This employer or employee of yours, sorry, employee, who is interfacing with the particular customer needs to be empowered to do that. And this is where you basically give them all, not only training and soft skills, but all kinds of technology to be able to answer that question. So I'll give you an example. Recently, I bought a Bose Quiet Comfort headphone. I don't know if you know, there's a new product which they have launched. It's called QC35, right? And I did the research, the kind of research which, which I talked about. And somebody out there said that if you wear the headphones for a long period of time, you actually get a slight amount of pain in the ear. And the product, and I still bought the product incidentally, so I'm not advertising for or against it. But the product does not have an on-off feature. So you can't on or off noise cancellation out there, correct? And it was, the product was recently introduced. So I read about it, and I decided to buy it because I'm a big Bose fan. And I went into a shop. And I asked the person about this particular aspect. Because the product was new, the guy actually did not know it. Now, had I not been a Bose fan, I would not have bought the product. But just think about it. Had that guy been empowered with a tablet or with 
you know a surface or with a mobile phone or with anything which could do assisted selling which could look into those aspects and I am sure those answers are there in an FAQ for that guy somewhere out there that guy could have actually answered me. So here he was lucky that I am a fan and I bought a Bose but he may not be lucky next time because somebody might be looking at a Bose and a Sennheiser and all of these stuff which is out there do a comparison does not get an answer and walk out correct right? and that is what we are talking about empowering empowering uh, your, your employees. The last aspect of it is transforming your products. So basically what you do, you use all of this information because we talk of four pillars, there is so much information which comes from all this data which you collect about consumers, correct? It is what they are writing in the social media, in the social feed, is somebody happy, is un somebody unhappy, etc, etc. Then you have all of these pieces of information which is what your employees and your workers give you based on the interactions they have. And then you have automated your entire stores where you have done everything from procurement to inventory management to store management to billing to, to loyalty etc. So you use all of this to then come back into your product or your service or your offering or your pricing to enable something which suits the consumer better because at the end of the day you want to be more applicable to the end customer. You want repeat business and you want repeat sales. And what we do, since I am from Microsoft, I got a little bit talk about Microsoft, is to have the application and the systems and my colleagues will talk about more about it, which puts all of this together on one single platform running on our data center with all the big data and the bot and the technology behind it. Okay? And what I wanted to end with is probably a video. Can I have the audio as well? It's how well we take care of our passengers. It's getting our customers where they want to go, when they want to be there, and always doing it safely. At Delta, we fly more than 165 million customers a year on 3,500 daily flights to more than 60 countries around the world. We're connecting people to businesses, their families, and their friends. We continue to look for new opportunities to improve the travel experience for our customers and our 80,000 employees. That's why we partnered with Microsoft to develop technology innovations, the Fly Delta mobile app, Surface tablets in the cockpit, and Windows phones in the hands of our flight attendants for easy in-flight transactions. Our old 38-pound flight bags have been replaced with Microsoft Surface devices. This allows pilots to better manage their flight by eliminating the need for paper charts, documents, and reference materials. Reducing that 38 pounds really gets us a fuel savings of 1.2 million gallons of fuel per year. About 2,300 cars will not be driving because we're using the Surface tablet. Now that doesn't even include about 900 trees a year for all the paper we've been using to print all of our manuals. Customers are at the center of our focus my colleagues and I strive to ensure that our customers have a safe, comfortable, and enjoyable flight. With Windows Phones and Microsoft Dynamics, we're able to process payments quickly, even while cruising at 500 miles per hour at 30,000 feet, a convenience that our passengers truly enjoy. Our innovative use of technology and integration of Microsoft products into our fleet provides the personal service our customers expect and helps assure they can make it to their most important commitments whether that be business, family, or friends. So if you come back to the three examples I gave, I started with an example of Amway, where you saw a customer walking through the entire different zone of a store where everything was done digitally, right, the entire consumer experience. I gave you examples of McDonald's and a few people who can do the in-store and the online together in what we call as the modern store to give you the experience. And what I ended up with, was an example of Delta Airlines, very different industry. But again, if you look at it, everything, when it touched the consumer, whether it was the ticketing, whether it was the check-in, whether it was the baggage, whether it was the in-flight service, or whether it was the organization pilot where the manuals were all digitally replaced with the surface, with, with the things being on surface, what could be done today digitally. So I come back with these four pillars, right? It is about empowering, it is about engaging with the customer, empowering your own people, optimizing your operations, and finally coming back to your products and services to make it better using analytics. Thank you so very much. Thank you.